Hey everyone, I just want to record a quick message at the top of this week's episode of Still Loading, the third episode of Mario Month. Uh, Nothing major, nothing involving the coronavirus, though. Be safe out there, everybody. I'm very thankful and grateful that everyone that I know is okay. I just hope that everyone out there is doing well as well with this kind of anxious and anxiety-driven time. But uh, in any case, The purpose of this little message at the top is to kind of give a little shout out to the Bit by Bit Foundation. You see, when I first recorded this episode, this was about a month ago, I was sick and I was very congested and you can definitely hear it. So I normally would just drop this in the middle of the episode, but because my voice is sound so different, I figured I'll just put it up at the top. So the Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to fundraise and provide video games for children receiving inpatient care at children's hospitals. You can check out their web page at bitbybitfoundation.org and consider donating if you can. Uh, They are a partner of the Still Loading Podcast, so it would mean a lot to me if you check out their website, and I am super happy to be partnered with them. So that's all I had. Um, Stay safe, everyone. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode. On this episode of Still Loading, get in sticky with Captain Syrup. Mm. (laughs) Mmm. (laughs) Mmm. Hello everyone, this is Josh, and welcome to this episode of Still Loading. We are continuing Mario Month with this episode. I apologize in advance, I am very congested and it probably sounds it, I can hear it right now, but uh, I didn't have a whole lot of time. I'm actually feeling pretty good, just congested as hell, so hopefully it doesn't sound too bad. Uh, But with me, as per usual, for all my Mario Month episodes is my good old buddy, Casey. Casey, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. It's always a pleasure doing this. Um, So we are, Casey, you and I are talking about the third game in the Mario Land series. And this game is vastly different from the previous two games in the series. Uh, now it's it's been it's been a while. Uh, it's been about a month or so since we last recorded our, the first two episodes. We're, we are recording these pretty far in advance, um, mainly because of the big summer project that's coming up, which will be announced at the end of Mario Month. So uh, keep an uh, ear out, eye ear out for that. Get ready. Uh, get ready. Get wrecked. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so. We're talking about Mario Land 3, uh, Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land. And this game was released on January 21st, 1994 in Japan and on March 13th, 1994 in the U.S. It was released in May thir- on, on May 13th, 94 in the PAL regions. So we're coming up on 25 years in March. I'm going to have to replay oh. it at that point. No, 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 my math is long. My math is completely wrong. This was 25 wrong. years 26. old. Yeah, it was that's 25 right. years old, old that's last right. it's, year. It's 2020. 2020. 2020. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're talking about Super Mario Land 3. This game was fascinating to me because unlike the previous Mario Land games, one, it shouldn't really be called Mario Land. I know they totally threw it in there just to get essentially link the two together. You have Super Mario Land 2, Super Mario Land 3, and but Super Mario Land three, they they in big letters on this, it's just called Wario Land. So this is where we're going to kind of divert a little bit from the classic Mario canon because the next two episodes after this are going to be the Wario Land games. Uh, I know it's a little different; it's not quite Mario, but it did start from a Mario series, so I'm kind of counting it. And I know we're actually going to run out of Wario Land games for this. Or sorry, we're going to run out of time to cover all these Wario Land games because there is a Wario Land 4, I believe, and uh, that's not going to fit into Mario Month. But it will fit in on like an odds and ends month, maybe next year or a year after that or something like that. Um, So Wario Land or Mario Land 3 was a huge departure from the rest of the series, mainly because it got rid rid of Mario because you play as Wario. And... On top of that, besides just playing as Wario, you are playing a completely different gameplay style. Uh, Casey, what was one of the, your first impressions of, like, you've, you've beat in this game, right? I have. So I originally borrowed this from a friend back in the day because uh, it had the Mario Land title in it. And I'm thinking, 
it would be relatively similar gameplay, but obviously that was not the case. Yeah. Um, back then when I first originally played it, I was honestly not a fan. Um, well, you were expecting my expectations, Mario. Yeah, exactly. Your expectations were completely subverted. Right. So I, I really wasn't a fan. So years, years, years later, um, I picked it up again and it really grew on me. So it was one of those games where, you know, at first I didn't like it and then tried it again. It's like, okay, this is really good. So, um, I think what captured my excuse me captured my imagination about Wario Land was how inventive all the different things were because it was a complete. I mean, this game, like we said, this is twenty six years old now, but the gameplay style was so unique and inventive for the time because you didn't really see a lot of exploratory platformers like that. Um, specifically, like I would say, the closest example is Metroid because Metroid is an exploratory platformer, but it's also more of a linear progression type of thing or it's a sorry not a non-linear progression type of game wario land is exploratory within the levels Mm -hmm. but it is still a linear game because you go level by level by level by level it integrates a lot of puzzles and into a lot of puzzle solving which is you know for a mario game at that time was different and especially for that for a handheld for like uh for like vacations Mm -hmm. or road trips or whatever pretty long game too yeah so what, what? one of the biggest differences in this game is that coins do nothing for you in terms of lives. It is a very important factor. They are still a very important factor within the gameplay, but they do nothing for you in terms of lives. What they do is they do basically give you treasure. And you can use, if, if you collect 10 coins, you can actually... You like basically trade in ten of those coins for like a weapon. Essentially, you get to throw a giant ten piece coin at an enemy and just dist- and hurt them. Um, so you could do that. You could also spend the ten coins to do things like uh, buying uh, saves within within levels. Essentially, it was a you could buy checkpoints with it. So you could spend ten coins and it would pop into a little slot and it would save the spot where you are on the level. You could also uh, say use the 10 coin you also needed to, at least 10 coins to exit a level so if you didn't have 10 coins at the time because you're really bad and you're getting hit a lot and you're losing coins you actually had to go back through the level and recollect some coins i mean theoretically that might mean that you could be so bad that you would never get out because if you lost if you collected all the coins and then lost all of those coins to getting hit by enemies you're kind of fucked yeah uh but so yeah so that it was an interesting departure from the series and i the music's really good Mm -hmm. the graphics are really pleasant this is the last uh mario land game to be in black and white because after this uh wario land 2 was in color and obviously the rest of the games after that were in color um and it was the last one to have the super mario land uh moniker in the title well there was um yes and no because then it, i think mario land changed to actually this is a good point because didn't mario like super mario land 4 was like super mario world or something like that that's super mario brothers 4 N- S- really yeah super mario brothers 4 in japan was super mario world well no 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 no. i'm talking about like because on the oh, you're talking Boy, about the advance the, the advance super mario, oh yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah super mario advance yeah 4. that's exactly. what it is mm-hmm. i was just um, going by the land yeah, yeah yeah no that makes sense mm-hmm. um no, you're right. It is the last one to be called Super Mario Land. Up until then, you would get uh, Super Mario 3D Land mm-hmm. uh, for the 3DS, which I actually have not played. I beat 3D World, and I really enjoyed 3D World, but I have not played 3D Land yet, so I, I need to get I need to get on that. Yeah, it's definitely worth buying. Um, it's funny. I know there's a bootleg homebrew of Super Mario Land 4, which the art and the gameplay is goofy for some reason i have it on my computer i don't know how it got there i think i just got it in bulk <laughs> <laughs> i never really gave it a shot but i'm just like what the hell is this <laughs> yep yeah, so i mean um as we were discussing in the previous episodes going over the developers and the publishers and whatnot um yeah same with this game it's the nintendo r&d one um i think that's me or was it four this one is one this or the one. other one's four no, okay, this makes sense actually because um, R and D four is Miyamoto's group, and Miyamoto didn't really have much of a hand with a lot of the handheld Mario, so that actually makes sense. So R and D one, okay, yeah, and then the producer was a uh, was a uh, Gunpei Yokoi. 
Uh, Legendary rest in Gun- peace. Yeah, I know. For those who remember, I did do an episode on him a while ago, but it was uh, called Game Industry Legends Profile. It's a really long name. I should probably change that. But uh, I wanted to do an episode. I wanted to... I might actually bring it back. I had an idea for a series of talking about individuals who had very big impacts on the game industry. And Yokoi was a no brainer. I mean, he created the game boy. He created the D pad. He created game and watch. Um, he also created the virtual boy. So you take some bad, but the majority <laughs> of it's good. No, now I collectors actually, still want the virtual. I even want the virtual boy. I want a virtual boy yeah. really bad. They're expensive as shit though. They are. Um, no, so R and D one. Okay, anything else you were able to look up? So um, the composers were um, Kozue Ishikawa and Ryoji Yoshitomi. Um, it, not the. Um, Why well, can't I think of his name? Not she, not uh, not uh, Koji Kondo. Is that who you're trying to think of? The original no, but, Mario guy, right? No, yeah, he. I know he's the legendary one, but no, the one. Um, who did the last one? The, uh, my God, why am I drawing a blank? Totoka song or something? Oh, Totaki song. Totaki song. Yeah, he's yeah. He's, Kazumi Totaka. Yeah, he Totaka's not. He did not have a. Um, did not have a, a hand, hand in, in this, this one. No, he did um, not. So this game, you have a total of three different. Well, actually, four different power ups. One of them being the Starman, which makes Wario invincible. But you have three different power ups. You have the bull helmet, the jet helmet, and the dragon helmet. So this kind of sets Wario up for to be very. It's it's very much Wario meets Mario in the sense that Mario gets different power ups and therefore gets different abilities. Wario is similar, but each of his abilities, I would say, interacts with the world a little bit. It's a little bit more dynamic than all the Mar than all of Mario's abilities, because. I mean, Mario's abilities, they help you defeat enemies or traverse in specific areas. Like, you know, the cape in Super Mario World where it helps you get up to like hidden levels. Or if you're really good, just fly over an entire level. Um, that's always fun to do. But uh, each of the power-ups helped Wario find ways to destroy the environment a little bit easier, it seemed like. So, for example, the bull helmet, it increases Wario's strength, doubles the length of his shoulder charge, and also allows him to stick to the ceiling and perform butt stomps, which I actually didn't know he could stick to ceilings. Like, if you had the bull helmet on, you could jump up and just let him hang up there for a little bit. That's pretty cool. And you, But you could also have him slam down to the ground and, you know, sl- slam his butt and, like, uh, uh, either kill enemies or also... I, I don't know if it stunned them. Um, the jet helmet increases Wario's running speed and, fl- and, but sorry, it increases his running speed. It also lets him fly horizontally for a short period of time. And it also gives him the ability to shoulder charge underwater. Um, you know what? I guess we didn't even really talk about it. The big difference between Wario's move sets and Mario's move sets. Um, Mario, the only thing he can do is just jump and he also can slide down, uh, ramps to like kill enemies which doesn't really happen until Mar- super mario Bros. 3 but still um but in uh wario land he has the charge ability he can also slide down things and actually curl up into a ball and just like mm-hmm. and like roll past enemies which is a lot of fun you can also jump while you're rolling in that ball so that way you can like hop over things they actually created some interesting puzzle platforming cell uh, segments with that where you would get the tiniest little bit. You would have the tiniest tail, and you could see like, okay, well, maybe there's a hidden thing. Because I remember when I first played through this, I was so confused as to seeing like um, breakable blocks that were only one like uh, one square high. Mm-hmm. So Wario was, you know, it's about two squares high, and he couldn't break through them. He could break through the first one, but he couldn't break through any of the others because his, you know, his anim- his charge animation wouldn't go there. So, and it took me about over halfway through the game to realize that, oh, you're supposed to roll down the side and let him, like, tunnel through everything. But it was cool because then it would kind of force you, if you missed, if you messed it up, you'd have to go back and redo that and keep, you'd have to figure out the right rhythm and uh, method to get over the different obstacles so you could plow through all that. Yeah. It, it, it is neat how they kind of differentiated his moveset and... You know, him being this big guy, he will also come across other types of enemies that are even bigger than him, and it mm-hmm. even calls him problems. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about that, but... Um, 
I mean, yeah. he has one other power up we haven't talked about yet, and it's the dragon helmet. The dragon helmet shoots uh, burst, but long range uh, burst. Sorry, it shoots long range bursts of flames, and this also works underwater too. Uh, this replaces his shoulder charge. So when you have the dragon helmet on, he can't like you know lead with his shoulder. It actually it shoots through. It just replaces it. You know, shoots fire. Um, and actually, there is one that I forgot. You also have small Wario, where Wario transforms into you know a small version of himself. Um, he is then not able to body slam, uh, and taking more damage results in a loss of a life. A uh, small warrior can transform back into regular warrior by finding a garlic pot or by completing a level. He can transform directly to bull dragon or jet wire just by finding the applicable power up. So that was actually read directly off the Mario wiki. But um, so that that's Wario's move sets, and it like like we said at the beginning of the episode, it's very interesting to see how much how different he is from Mario because. Even though it's a Mario Land game, well, clearly it's meant to be a Wario Land. I mean, but the whole reason they put the Mario Land on the title was to introduce the character of Wario as a playable concept, mm -hmm. not just the villain from the previous game. Um, but uh, as you play through the game, there are multiple worlds, and in each world there are multiple levels. So it's very Mario-like with that. And actually the final level is Syrup Castle, hence the little intro <laughs> uh, for the beginning of the episode. Um, there's a lot, there's a whole bunch of different enemies. There's a cavalcade of different enemies you can choose from or that you get to fight. Um, probably my least favorite enemy in the entire game would have to be the, uh, Kumari missiles, which are these weird projectiles that, uh, that get shot by another enemy. It was just, I forget. It was just obnoxious to fight. They were, they would, ugh. Sorry, I'm not describing this well, but they, they were probably my least favorite enemy. Um, but there are so many different uh, enemies in this game. Like even just looking at the wiki here, there is easily 15, 20. Uh, and there's a lot of different bosses. And actually one of the things that stood out to me the most in the Wario Land games were the boss fights. Um, cause unlike Mario, where a lot of the boss fights are pretty simplistic overall, uh, Wario, sorry, Mario world, I think was the first one that I remember where the bosses tried to do something a little bit different each time. Uh, it was all the, um, the, I think, are they, were they the Koopa kids in the castle? I yeah. Don't, yeah. I couldn't remember. I knew the Koopa kids Koopa, were in the third, yeah. it were in Mario Bros. 3, but I couldn't remember if they were in world as yep. well. Yep. And then you also had like the sub bosses, like the Resnors, which are the rhinos that shoot yeah. the fireballs. But even that, it was just the same thing over again. They yeah. would have a little bit different pattern for the for the bridges to get broken up and destroyed. But overall, it was the same thing. But um, the Koopa Kids were the ones that had slightly different, slightly different patterns to them. But for the most part, it was still just figure out their one note pattern and jump on their head, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much about it. Um, but Wario. Like all the all the bosses were super interesting. Um, there's the spiked Koopa, which uh, he kind of has like a three. He has a three part attack. Uh, he strikes from the land, air, and underground. His shell makes him invulnerable to ground pounds and fire, uh, but he can be rammed into, it, which exposes his soft belly. And then after three hits of hitting his stomach, after you know you ram into him, he flips over and you ground pound on his stomach three of those and you defeat them once again it's kind of the three and out thing that almost all mario games go for but uh that's the first boss of the game but then the next one is bifoon uh who i uh, actually sorry spike koopa you fight at the end of the rice beach world uh bifoon you fight at the end of mr T mount teapot world and i guess that actually before i talk about the other boss uh the other levels or the other worlds you have rice beach like i mentioned before you have Mount Teapot, you have Sherbert Land, Stove Canyon, SS Teacup, Parsley Woods, and Syrup Castle. I'm sorry. As much as I love the Super Mario Brothers series, they are so uncreative really? when it comes to that. I've always had a pet peeve with the the lands and the um, enemies that they've come up with. It just, I just, I feel like they could have done so much better. You don't like Donut Plains? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, come on. You know, uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, another, aunt, another. I saw a meme um, and they, that said, Waluigi is one of those concepts that 
you can't tell whether Nintendo was trying too hard or not hard enough. (laughs) 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 And I'm like, wow, that is so true. I don't, I can't think. (laughs) Because he's just little. What I liked about Wario, and I think we mentioned it in the last episode, but Wario is bad mario and it's like warui it means bad in japanese i like that that's cool and yeah well actually that might be luigi because while luigi is warui it's very um like that's a little bit more on the nose than anything so True. it's weird because it's like they are they literally it seems like they're not trying hard enough with that but at the same time it completely works because yeah. the characters are so like 1920s villain with like uh yeah. you know the pencil thin mustache yep. and like the top hat yeah I'm going to tire to the railroad tracks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that's funny, though. Um, I guess also because we kind of we're talking about the different worlds, we should mention what the plot of Wario Land 1 is because we haven't really even talked about it. Um, but the plot of the game is essentially uh, I'm going to read this directly off the wiki because if I try to explain it off the top of the dome, I usually have a lot of ums and ahs. So just for the any of you asking, yes, I'm reading this directly off the wiki. <laughs> uh, but desiring to replace and restore the castle he lost to his rival in Super Mario Land 2, Wario sets out to steal a golden statue of Princess Toadstool from the brown sugar pirates and captain syrup yeah there you go captain syrup um which he intends to ransom for the money to buy his own castle along the way he collects or steals any other coins and treasures he finds or any other coins or treasures he finds and knocks out enemies the game is spent navigating a number of levels to reclaim his lost treasures and has a significant level of replayability due to the branch path that many of the levels take in the end captain syrup revealed to be a female which was hidden in the instruction manual is defeated while wario ultimately gets anything from a bird what what oh okay i see um (laughs) is defeated and wario gets treasure so what's cool because wario's whole beef through all of his series is that he just wants treasure he is chaotic neutral at its best (laughs) um (laughs) or i guess i guess that would be chaotic he's just like he just wants money i don't know if that's chaotic neutral uh anyone online to let me know if i'm right with that i'm pretty sure that's chaotic neutral but um he just wants money and that motif does not change ever throughout at least so far in the in the games that we're talking about here i have not played uh wario land 4 mind you but i don't see that changing since that seems appears to be his theme uh, but what's cool at the end of this game is that once you beat all the worlds and you beat all the levels depending on how much treasure you collected throughout the game will determine what type of a house Wario gets. If you end up with one money bag, which is essentially you get 300 to 10,000 total coins throughout your playthrough, you get a birdhouse. Congratulations, you're bad. Um, if you get two money bags, which is actually what I got, so I'm one step above bad, but still pretty terrible. Uh, that's 10,000 to, sorry, excuse me, 10,072 to be exact to 40,007 total. Why are these so specific? I, so the first one is 300 to 10,071 coins. You get a birdhouse. Then you have 10,072 to 40,007 total coins, You get, which is two money bags. You get a tree trunk, which is what I get. So I got a tree trunk. Um, if you get 40,008 to 70,007, you get a log cabin. Uh, 70,008 to 90,007 Pagoda uh, 90,008 to 99,998 total coins you get a castle and if you get ev- all the coins 99,999 all the coins all 15 treasures and 40 courses cleared because so, there's a lot of courses in this you get a planet you get a full fucking planet. <laughs> and if you get one million, you have to find that special extra one. You get a girlfriend. <laughs> Is that true? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> That'd be great. Though. That'd be really funny. It would be like uh, uh, Princess Wapichi. That's that was stupid. I'm not even. I that's a bad. That wasn't even a joke. <laughs> that was just bad. Um, yeah, I would have loved that though if that was a real thing. Wapichi. 
Wow. Well, no, so if you, if you find oh, okay. that, that, that <laughs> okay. super secretive extra And coin, Wario gets a girlfriend. Yeah, he gets a girlfriend. Find out it's just actually like female Wa- Waluigi. Wa- Waria. No, Waria, yeah. <laughs> that's better. Oh, okay, that makes a lot better. I, <laughs> I, well, I was going with like, because you know, have you have like, like Wario is Wadui plus Mario. Mm-hmm. So you have Waluigi, Walu- Wal- Wadui plus Waluigi. So you get Wally. Uh, what what to- um, what toadstool? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what daisy? Um, it just I don't know. But anyway, so that's the plot of the game, uh, and you play through all the different worlds. We mentioned already Rice Beach and Mount Teapot, but and Sherbert Land, there's Stove Canyon, SST Cup, Parsley Woods, and Syrup Castle, and each there's bosses to go back to how i went off on that whole tangent then there's all the different bosses for it so like bifoon like we said um is the boss for mount teapot he's kind of like a bull uh bifoon kind of looks like a bull yeah uh he's immune to head stomps and ground pounds due to his horns and thick hide he attempts to destroy wario by picking him up and throwing him into the lava below their battleground to defeat him wario has to throw him into the lava instead um Bifun, i think was uh i just like his design a lot actually this is terrifying on the wiki if you go into his page he they actually colorize him because normally you know he's just black and white from the game boy look at this casey that's terrifying yeah that is pretty pretty creepy i like it though what his i think my favorite part about his design is that you know how bulls have like the, the like the you always see in like cartoons bulls have the ring through their nose oh like yeah the, the septum, oh, the septum piercing, piercing yeah <laughs> this guy has that too but he has a human nose on a bull's head like a giant ass human nose on a bull's head it's mortifying <laughs> that's clearly a human nose right <laughs> kind of looks like a penis <laughs> <laughs> oh my mind I need to. No, you're you're right. It's it's there. Um, it's just it's absolutely horrifying. I can't get over it. Like, and I can't stop looking at it. It's funny though. Actually, right where his horns are up at the top, he, it totally looks like those would be the testicles. I'm just saying. Um, so then the next boss is uh, Hinyari, who is the boss of Sherbert Land. Uh, it's a Hinyari is a big freaking mammoth of a penguin um and he's got like spikes for fists and stuff like that oh, sorry not spikes for fists spikes boxing gloves um but he's immune to ground pounds on fire but wario can hurt him by hitting him on his head uh which makes sense he then dons a spiky helmet which wario can simply knock off with a slam and then attacks the penguin which hold on no no okay that makes sense the last boss was immune to slams to ground pounds um but so each of the bosses have a unique mechanic and we're, we're going to get to it in wario land 2 but they add like some really interesting ideas for boss fights in wario land 2 which i'm really excited to talk, to talk about um but then to just kind of continue down with the boss list you have fun fun <laughs> sorry fun 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 Right. Uh, it's a big face. It's a. You see what I'm saying? Like I just, they can do so much better. <laughs> well, it, so you have like, uh, so Spite Koopa is, you know, okay, it's not creative, but it fits with the world. I can give that. Beefoon is, I don't know if that's a pun for like beef, like because he's a bull. Beefoon. Um, uh, Hinyari is a penguin. Hinyari is an interesting name. Fun Fun is uh, just a giant stone head. Who? Oh my god! Like it's his uh, description. For, on the wiki is very erotic. <laughs> no, uh, do tell is uh, Stonehead whose style, whose fighting style, revolves around breaking blocks with his tongue and trying to get Wario to fall into a chasm and spinning rocks. I'm hmm. oh, sorry, breaking blocks with his tongue, trying to get Wario to fall in chasm and and uh, spinning rocks. Fun Fun is immune to fire, coins, and ground pounds, but the rubble. Excuse me, but the rubble his attacks leave behind are picked up by Wario and thrown at him to defeat him. Um, so even just going from the previous boss to the last one, like the fir- the last two bosses, Hinyari and Bifun, it was very much where you have to stun them in order. Actually, even uh, the Spike Koopa, it's you have to stun them to reveal their weak spot and then damage them. This fourth boss, Fun... I can't get over that stupid name. <laughs> fun Fun. Fun Fun. Uh, you have to use his own projectiles against him as a weapon. Uh, the next boss... Uh, so Fun Fun was the boss of Stove Canyon. 
Hinari was the uh, boss of Sherberlin, Bifun Mount Teapot, and Spike Koopa Rice Beach. But the next one is the boss of SST Cup. Uh, underwhelming level world name, but fair enough. Uh, and the boss's name is Bobo. That's all it is. Is it a clown? No, it is a giant bird. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Not expecting that. I you thought you said you beat this. Uh, like 10 it's years been ago. A while. Yeah, it's been yeah, a while. Yeah, like 10 years ago. You know what I you know what would be cool if they took the same bird that was in the tree zone from uh Mario Land 2 and made that the final boss. Mario Land 2. Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That would be cool. Um this game like I I'm not going to read there's actually only two more bosses. I won't go and read all of them. There is then it goes back to interesting names. There's Zenosuke, who is the boss of Parsley Woods, and then finally the genie for Sierra Castle, which I was kind of shoehorned into it because the, um, uh, what is it, uh, Captain Syrup or whatever her face is, uh, her, she uses a magic lamp to, and then to bring the genie out, then you have to fight the genie. Um, I do remember the like trying to get up to that no i'm thinking of mario, mario land 2 uh the six one coins that final boss like the final gauntlet leading up to fighting wario i hate it that was so difficult um but in this one the game is overall super easy like you can beat the game with a relative ease it's just it's just more time consuming than anything um, and as people who follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this episode coming because I posted about beating this game as well as Wario Land 2. And uh, unfortunately, the copy we had of Wario Land 3 didn't work. So I've been having to do I w- I've been doing research on that without the benefit of being able to play the game. But yeah, so that's pretty much all the bosses. But the, the genie fight, uh, from what I remember, was interesting. Uh, the genie pr- like shoots fireballs at you and they chase Wario around. However, Wario can toss a coin. The genie's... Oh. Oh, yeah, I remember this. So it was interesting. Um, the way you had to fight the genie is that you would have to, like, you would have the magic lamp that it came from, and you'd have to uh, get it upright. And then that by getting it, like, to set it up, so essentially you were constantly throwing the... While dodging the genie's fireballs, you would have to throw the lamp to get it to sit upright and then it would create clouds and you'd have to jump on the cloud so you could jump on top of the genie's head and that's how you just rinse wash and repeat and you know the genie's patterns would get a little bit more difficult each time but it was interesting because if you're the it was designed really well because if you think about it the way it teaches you to fight is that if you're trying you're as you're trying to figure out what to do to fight the boss you're going to be dodging its fireballs and as you're running across, you're bound to hit the 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 lamp that the genie comes from, and you're going to notice that you can move it when you run into it. And you're like going to be like, well, that's odd. Why am I able to move this? Or you pick it up. So then it leads you to think like, all right, let me just try throwing it at him. And then it doesn't do anything because you, you're confused why. But uh, eventually you it, it lands upright, and all of a sudden there's clouds. Like I remember I didn't quite understand that the first time, and I was getting frustrated by it. Um, And then all of a sudden the cloud showed up. I'm like, all right, I don't know what I did to trigger this. Um, So I unfortunately did look up because I'm an impatient fucking, you know, 2020 like baby. But um, uh, but realistically, you would just keep doing that. I still think it's designed well. I was impatient. I don't blame the game on that. But you uh, you throw that you throw the lamp and then eventually it sits upright. You can jump up and, you know rinse wash repeat and jump on top of the genie's head i thought overall i thought that final boss was super fun and super rewarding for beating Mm -hmm. because it it kind of brought in a lot of mechanics that you use throughout the game of you know picking like because you can pick enemies up and throw them to hurt other enemies and kill other enemies um so taking that mechanic and applying it to this fight was super fun to do and i guess you kind of do that even in like mario world because you to beat bowser in mario world you have to jump on his little uh mecha koopas and throw them up up, yeah that i hated because (laughs) no other boss kind of made you do something like that up until that point so i was like this is unfair i have no practice with accuracy with these i was so mad when i first played that it is neat too because you know, playing it for the first time, you know, I don't remember the first time I even tried doing that, but imagine, you know, going to that boss, Bowser's going back and forth, and then he just throws out these two Mecha Koopas, like, what the hell am I supposed to do with these? Yeah. You know, you have to, like, figure it out. <laughs> um, 
any uh, any final thoughts on the game so far? I mean, we're not done 100 percent just yet. I want to talk about the reception of the game a little bit um, and just, you know, whatever else comes to mind. But is, uh, any thoughts that you have on the game that you haven't been able to talk about yet? Um, I just really like the mechanics. I really liked how I could just bum rush enemies and just bulldoze like blocks and stuff just with my um, shoulder and just cause havoc. Wario is a fun character. I think it made it. He became the chaotic neutral, but he's not a villain. You know, like he was a villain in the first in Mario Land too. But like his, him doing that, like them making a full game out of him, was such a cool idea because you didn't see it very often. Where Nintendo would take a villain and make an entire game out of that villain. Like hell, is there any ba- games based around Bowser at the moment? Like, has no, there ever no, been? No, I don't think so. And he's the most popular Mario villain of all time. So it's interesting that they would do that. Like, you never, you still don't see that with Mario games. No. Um, I mean, I think that's a very '90s thing to do to make the villain the hero, because uh, I.e. Terminator Two. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if that's an inspiration by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I think that that's a very far stretch to be like Terminator Two to Super Mario Land Three. Like that's a it's a bit of a bit of a jump. You found him out. You found him out. That was a that was the whole through line. That was the thread that connects everything. Exactly. Mario to Terminator. Um that would be a cool like panel at a con. You know, like uh what would be it would be like Super Terminator Bros, the Mario to James Cameron connection or something like that. <laughs> That'd be stupid. I don't think that actually um I don't think there is actually any connection, but I just just the idea of like the villain becoming the hero or someone who's not quite as villainous in the next game slash movie is something that obviously was they they've done before and like now it's been done to death. But at the time, you don't really like. I mean, now it's been done to death in terms of like movies. Like, how have you watched the Fast and Furious movies? No, I haven't seen any of them. Oh my god. Um, How many are there? There are like 12 of them. Uh, well, I know they're doing Fast 9, right? Nine's coming out, and then they have a side one called Hobbs and Shaw. Did they have Tokyo Drift? And That's the third one. What else did they have? Uh, there's nine total, if you count the one coming out this year. Uh, and I thought that was a, I thought Tokyo Drift was the side one. I didn't know that no. was the third. Okay. Um, oh, I'm, a super, I'm a Fast and Furious fanboy. I love that series. <laughs> it has no right being as fun as it is because it's like it the thing is like i'm not into cars i'm not into any of that stuff but the action is just so insane um that i love it and they've gotten to the point now where it's they are so self-aware of how stupid the stuff they do is and i'm all for it (laughs) i'm all for it let's just see how far we can push the envelope now in the seventh movie vin diesel lifts up a car like he like from like not the full car. They what they do is that they pick a ridiculous thing. Like, all right, well, we can't have him lift an entire car over his head, but you know he could be strong enough just to lift one end of it so someone could slide under. That's no, <laughs> that's not how this works. They're practically superheroes in in this. But anyway, so uh, spoiler alert for those who have not seen any of the Fast and Furious, and I'm, I don't think you'd really care all that much. At the end of the sixth movie, you find out that one of the deaths of the main characters was caused by someone else and someone that you haven't met before in the series. And you, then it pans back and it's Jason Statham and he hasn't, he, that's when he joins the franchise. You're like, Holy shit, he's a villain. And you're all, I was excited. I'm like Jason Statham's in the fast and furious movies. This is fucking great. <laughs> and then the, uh, then the whole seventh movie, he is the villain. He is one of the main villains. And by the eighth movie, he's a good guy. Hmm. He literally kills one of the members of the team who was with the team for a long time. And by the end of by the end of the eighth movie, they're like, all right, I mean, you did kill this guy, but you know, your family. Uh it's wild. <laughs> At least Terminator they have like it makes sense because it's like, oh, he's a robot, he was reprogrammed, but this makes no sense, and I'm all here for it. The stupider, the better. Anyway, Have back you seen to Crank. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Crank is basically the Fast and Furious movies, if you think like Really? I mean, in terms of absurdity, okay. yeah. I would say Crank is more absurd in premise because like have you seen both of them? Yeah. 
I saw, those, the, I saw the first one in theaters. I haven't seen it. I saw oh the second one at home, though. So yeah. for those who have never heard of the movies, uh, the Crank movies are Jason Statham, and it's an action. They're both action movies. And it's about this guy who, get, in the first movie, his heart is, like, stolen, and then they essentially, like, they steal his heart, <laughs> and they put in, a, like, a transplant heart, <laughs> and it's only supposed to allow him to live for, like, um like 24 hours or something like uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember. Something like stupid. Like that, yeah. And it's not supposed to last that long. So he has... To, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's the second movie. The first movie, he gets poisoned. Yeah. And he has to keep his adrenaline up because it slows the poison until he can get to the place where he needs to to take care of the poison. Um, so he goes into a convenience store and just robs all the Red Bulls. And- yeah. <laughs> he starts... He robs the Red Bulls. He goes into a black bar and starts yelling racial slurs <laughs> and gets into a fight. Um, and he goes on to... He he has sex with his girlfriend. In a rodeo. In, no, that's the second movie. Oh, that's the second one? In, oh, in, in public up. in, in uh, Chinatown, where, in whichever city he's in. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, and then he just leaves her, and she's like, "What just happened?" <laughs> it's the craziest movie I've ever seen, and the second one's even more insane because that's when his heart gets stolen and replaced with like a like a, like a basically a battery heart. And to keep the, he has to keep finding electrical charges to keep charging up his bat <laughs> his so his heart. Stupid! I love it. And there's a scene where he <laughs> takes. Uh, what is it? Like jumper jumper cable, cables, yeah. And ties it to like a power line and puts one end on his tongue and holds the other end with his hand. It's <laughs> wild. Uh, he rubs up on an old woman who's wearing fleece so he can get the static electricity to charge up his heart. <laughs> like, and, oh my God, that movie is insane. It's so good. Anyway, uh, Wario Land. I could talk about those movies forever. So, the reception. What Rece- reception of Wario Oh yeah, Land. reception. Yeah. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going to talk about the reception of of um Wario Land One slash Mario Land Three. Uh, it didn't sell as well as the, the other Mario Land predecessors, but it received pretty favorable reviews. Um, it made it onto Nintendo Power's 100 Best Nintendo Games of All Time in 1997, which I don't know if it would still be on that now. Uh, some of these are like relatively new. Like they were someone someone reviewed the 3DS release of it. They gave it a nine out of ten on Nintendo Life, um, and also on the 3DS release, uh, it was a seven point nine out of ten from IGN. Uh, so that makes sense. Nintendo Life gives it a nine out of ten, and then IGN is a little bit different. Though IGN, I know a lot of people have issues with their rating systems. Um, and at uh, GameRankings.com, it has it holds an eighty three point eleven percent rating, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that that pretty much wraps up what I have to say about Mario Land Three. What about you, Casey? Same. I mean, it's a very decent game. I I definitely will put it on a must stone for Game Boy collectors. Or it's even really owners. good. It's, it's really really it's good. Definitely worth playing and owning. Um, and honestly, um, it set it set the set the bar for. The sequels, two is my favorite. I actually will. I agree with you. Yeah, I love favorite. two a lot. Yeah. Um. I wish I. I wish I could play three, but um. Three. I, I get the battery fixed. Yeah. Uh, well, it's weird because it plays, but I wonder if it's the battery, just because like it's not saving or something like that. I'm I don't guessing, know. Yeah. No, but Wario Land One is just a really fun game. It has a lot of replayability. You kind of made the Wario games something where they wanted you to go back and replay and find all the secrets, find all the exits. I mean, hell, like we said, at the very end of it, uh, you, based on how much treasure you collect, determines what type of house you get. So if you don't get a big enough house, it encourages you to go back and replay the game to get more coins and get a better score so that way you can have a better house and eventually working up to a full freaking planet. Um. So and yeah, the girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> and, and that hidden bonus that doesn't exist. That's in the, but that's ex- in the uh, director's cut. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap this episode yeah. up. Uh, Casey, thank you for joining me Absolutely. for another episode. I love having. I love that you have me on for these types of episodes. Um. As usual, well, actually, Casey, is there any social media you want to plug? I guess just the Instagram. You know, the TK underscore Kazuya Kane. Just all my video game related stuff. 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and then, as usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Still Loading Pod on all of them. You could also reach out to me, Still Loading Contact at gmail.com. If you want to support the show, you could do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, the easiest way for all of you is just to give it a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcasting app you use. Uh, the reviews and the ratings help get more exposure for the show to f- help more people find it. So that would be super helpful. Um, you can also support me on patreon patreon.com slash still loading pod you can check it out there even just a dollar a month will help me grow the show more and check out the network i'm a part of podbeardnetwork.com and all the great you can check out all the great podcasts on the website there and that should do it uh so thank you all once again for listening and i will see you all next time